Mic check, mic check. Okay. Uh, please raise your hand if you're in the room and you can hear me. Very nice. If you haven't guessed, this session is about testing, so we're going to test more things than just the microphone and the audience. Um, right. Um, so, uh, welcome to the session called Integration Tests Are Needed in Simple. I hope to get you through this session in this very particular order. I think you came here because you have questions, and since it's uh, my first time uh, here at uh, Vox CERN, um, and I'm like extremely grateful for this, I, I need to... How do I do that? Um, sorry, I'm also getting used to this machine. I need to show you uh, one thing, which would be, yes, this is about like what testing also means, right? Um, <laughs> so, according to some, um, you know, airlines, uh, which name starts with L and ends with Ufthansa. Um, <laughs> This is an illegal uh, family name. I mean, jokes aside, of course, like, it, it has to be like, without diacritics and whatnot, right? So, I'm uh, Piotr Przybył. Uh, welcome to the session. How do I make it full screen like this? Okay. Um, shortly about myself, uh, you can follow me on uh, Twitter, or you can DM me on Telegram, you can follow me on Mastodon and other social networks, apart from TikTok. Uh, I work as a senior developer advocate for uh, a company called Elastic, you know, for search, you might have heard of it. Uh, what I do beside that, I'm a Java champion, test containers community champion, uh, Oracle Ace, uh, I work as a trainer from time to time, and you know, I have some spare time and something I think is interesting, I put a blog post on my personal page called softwaregarden.dev because I've been into software gardening for uh, quite a while, I would say. This is basically me. <laughs> this is basically me. The Java has been always somewhere in, like, in behind. Even when I go on a holiday uh, to, to lovely Spain, there is uh, Java, uh, right? So I started my adventure with computers in 1998, uh, where my uncle uh, brought me my first, very first computer, despite him being not like a rich uh, person. He was just a teacher. He managed to squeeze enough of his savings to buy me a computer. Fast forward 26 years, and here I am, right? Um, working with Java for like 20 years. Um, yes, so the question is, who are you? Because I need to tune this presentation a little bit. Who's working in Java? Okay, uh, all right, so let's flip it. Who's not working with Java? Okay, can you shout what you're working with? TypeScript? Is, the, is this Kotlin guy in the room? Okay, there are always a few calls. It's like, you should try this, but in Java, like, okay. Okay, uh, so we, we have to do it again. Sorry, like, little bit. Who's, like, Java 21? Okay, nice. Uh, okay, I saw that. Uh, 17? Okay, about half. 11? 8? Let's, let's not go that deep. Let's not go deeper. Okay, <laughs> let's not go deeper. All right, so now we're properly introduced. Do you know this lady? It's your granny, dummy. It's your granny. It's your lovely granny. It can, be, it can be your auntie. It can be your mom, right? And the thing is, unfortunately, we've been through these hard times called pandemic, right? And you are an engineer, right? Software, hardware, doesn't really matter. You're an engineer. And this lovely lady gives you a call, right? Look, my son. Look, my daughter. Look, my child. I'm afraid this COVID impacted me more than I thought. I'm afraid I might have lose, uh, lost my, uh, my smelling abilities. So I have this gas stove in my kitchen, right? And maybe it's leaking some gas. I don't know. I can't tell. Since you are an engineer, maybe you can come and do something, like, I don't know, a device, gizmo, something, that basically would alarm me, alert me, like warn me when it detects uh, like a gas leaking or carbon monoxide, right? Something poisonous, something dangerous. Just like they have these sensors, right? Here and you know, in uh, around large Hadron uh, Hadron Collider, right? When there's like radiation detected, it starts beeping. When there's no oxygen, it starts beeping. It starts beeping, I guess, so often that okay, that's, that's safety. Okay, that's okay. So we want this at uh, this uh, in the kitchen of this lovely lady, right? Because we love this lady. So. Allow me to run a little experiment with you. Because we can, do, we can do it two ways. We can go for option A, 
we buy something that's already uh, available, right? Uh, or we can uh, use something already available, right? But we are software engineers, so we uh, might go for option B, which is go uh, going to build something on our own, right? Of course, it will be delivered after deadline. Of course, it's going to cost more, but at least it's going to be ours, right? This is what we do. So uh, let's, uh, let's do this little experiment. Uh, let's build a little smoke or gas detector, if you will. So safety protocol. Since we are at CERN, we have to play it by the book, right? Uh, I mean, proper university requires proper health and safety. Um, yes, so we'll be building this. Uh, we'll be building this uh, this detector, right? Something that will ring, uh, make no loud noises, something basically uh, when uh, there is a gas uh, detected, right? So let me just prepare for this. Sorry, I mean, I, I know it's it's maybe like too much, but better play it safe. Okay, where's this? Uh, Yes. So if you're not sitting in the front row, you should still be able to see what I'm doing. So what we need to do first is, of course, to have casing, right? To build smoke detector. So we have casing. What's the next thing you need to build a smoke detector? You need something that will actually work as a sensor, right? So we found this lovely clicky thing. It makes this lovely clicky sound, right? Uh, I guess we won't test it because someone on SourceForge.net said it's, it's working okay, so it's a reliable source. We just throw it into the box, right? Um, what's the next thing we need to build like a, a smoke detector? So we'll get to that, right? But we need power. Just like CERN drains a lot of electricity, we also need some electricity. So I have the power source in here, right? And I need to test it. This very thing, if it provides us some power. So I have this lovely mock, right? And it's spinning. Very nice chill breeze, okay? So we have tested this power source into the box. I don't need this mock anymore. Um, okay, so the next thing we're going to need is something to make the sound, right? So let's see if this thing works and makes some sound. It has a very poor music taste, but it works. Um, so the next thing we need, of course, is what is what is it? We need some bling bling, right? We need some bling bling, right? And now, imagine you're a manager. What's better than bling bling? Exactly, more bling blings. <laughs> Who said that? Okay, for active participants, I have this extra large uh, test container stickers, premium edition. Here we go. <laughs> Grab it. For everyone else, I have just regular ones, okay? But for like, uh, you know, honorable members of this audience, I have extra ones. Yes, so we have two bling bling. And there's one last thing we need, right? Wiring. You never go wrong with wires, right? You just some wires. So we have everything built, right? We have tested every part in there. We sealed it in the container. We have everything. Voila. Uh, we tested every part, except this, this sensor, but it's like certified and whatnot, right? So it's tested. We have full coverage. Who wants to install these things in your granny's kitchen? Are you a manager by any chance? <laughs> because it's usually manager, yes, where can I sign? Yeah, okay, so maybe it's time for us to realize the option B wasn't the best option, so let's fall back to option A, which is using something available in the market, right? So, um, just a little disclaimer, I'm, a, I'm going to use a device. I don't recommend you buying this device. I have no profit, no affiliation. It's just I have to have something for, uh, for the sake of the presentation, right? So I have this device. And now let's hope that the demo goats will be with us. Uh, can you see it? The refresh rate is terrible. Uh, can you see what does it say here? What's written here? Push to test, it says. So what shall, I, shall we do? Push to test, yes. Oops, enough. Okay, so what did we just do? We test, who said that? It was like you again. Okay, for super devoted people, I brought some jellies from Poland. <laughs> yes, exactly. We tested the button, or as Soviet scientists would say, we tested the connection between the button and the speaker. But we don't know if it really detects the gas. So what shall we do? Exactly. We should 
perform, like test it in like real conditions if it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, right? So let me put it into this container uh, because of safety again. Let me like seal it and let me even uh, double seal it. You know, you never, you never be sure, like extra sure. All right, now I have to open this pesky valve. Come on, and now, who speaks Polish? Okay, I kindly ask you to shut up because you will spoil the joke. Okay. So for this test to finish, we need to test this thing. We need Chad, and only this few people laugh because. It's a bad joke, right? In Polish, Chad stands for carbon monoxide. Okay, so we need Chad. Okay, so I'm going to put some Chad in there. Um, yes, I mean speaking Polish is one of my superpowers. Uh, and now let's let me keep your fingers crossed. Come on. Okay. Now let's wait. Let me close it. Come on. Come on. Will it work? It's showing something. You see, you never can be sure. More gas. More gas. Yeah, okay. <laughs> if Anna tells you to, to pour more gas, we are pouring more gas. More gas. Or what you can also try to do is to do some shaking. Uh, see, so this is the, the issue with live demos. It's, it's actually, it's, it's showing, I don't know if you can see this, it's showing like there's like increased uh, level of the gas, but it's still below the safety uh, threshold, so it doesn't yell at us, right? Maybe it will, no, it's already decreasing, so maybe still more gas. <laughs> maybe I'm running out of gas, you know? <laughs> Uh, it doesn't seem to be uh, causing an effect. Okay, so as you can see, almost. Oh. Open the window, people. <laughs> no, so eventually it worked, right? Very nice. So let me just disconnect it because it will yell at us or the whole presentation. So. Let me ask you this. Let's say tomorrow, after the, the party, right, you receive this call from your mom or your granny, right, and this thing has a lovely smiley faces. And this is just in an ugly bug. Which one will you install in the kitchen? This thing or this thing? Exactly. You would rather install this thing. So now let me ask you this other quite disturbing question, lovely people. Why do we build software this way, but when it comes to the life of someone we truly love, we switch hats and gears in our mind and do it this way? That's the question, right? So I hope I have proven to you the first thing that test container, sorry, that integration tests, uh, that was a Freudian slip, uh, are actually needed, right? Um, yes, uh, so let's, uh, let's close this, let's go back to these slides. Uh, right, it's this guy again. Yes, so it seems integration tests are needed, right? You don't need 100% uh, coverage generated by unit tests, you just need to be sure that the thing you're about to ship or deliver actually does what it's supposed to do. I mean, at least this single flow that's covering, you know, like 80% of the users or something. So let's check if these integration tests are really simple. Uh, so today I'm going to use a library called, of one of the library, but it's a whole family of libraries called test containers, right? 
Um, you can see them from many angles, and I'm not going to show you today any sophisticated techniques how to use it. I mean, there are other talks I have, and, and my friends doing this. Today is going to be like 101, or like um, get you quickly up to speed with test containers. Uh, so what does it do? It's like, as you can see, this, this whole family. Um, uh, there's even more, if I'm not mistaken, and you go to this test containers org, and this is how you start, right? Uh, they have a, a lovely page, uh, and, and you can see like uh, many things in there. But, how does the magic happen? We are here and we know there is no magic, there is just sophisticated engineering, right, and science behind it. So, the giant that Test Containers is using to get higher is called Docker. It's just as it is with the giants, especially when you are a young a uh, developer, like a super junior, they can be looking scary. So what Test Containers is doing for you is sort of like wrapping it so you can use it from one of the languages you already know. So instead of doing bash scripts or, or doing uh, commands in, in, in CLI or like encoding stuff in, in, in YAML, you just write the, your code, for example, in Java, as I will today, and then you eventually control how stuff is working using Docker containers. This is how it works, right? So. What we're going to do now is we're going to build quickly a gas detector, if you will, right? It's, disclaimer, it's, it's demo purposes only, okay? Um, yes, so we're going to build and test, mind you, this uh, carbon monoxide detector, which should start in less than four seconds. We should check for registered particles every second, not tw 25 nanoseconds, because that's for like really sophisticated machinery, and it should raise an alarm when a certain level I made up of thin air uh, is uh, rich, and that's, uh, that's it. So I'm going to use, uh, of course, Java 21, because uh, I, I, I need this um, virtual threads, right? And this is the code. It's available in my GitHub. You can clone it. You can play with it, if you will. So it's just the main method you see, and we have this alarm level, which is uh, 400 particles per, per million, right? And we're going to detect how many CO and other particles we have detected, and we're going to detect them using our good old HTTP server, right? So basically, I'm, I'm using this log FMT-ish FMT sort of uh, way of logging stuff, right? So it's easy to see like events and pass it and consume it. Uh, it the project is vanilla Java. Apart from test containers, I don't have anything. And then I'm passing the port it's supposed to listen. I'm passing it to the detector, right? I'm creating the detector. And it's quite simple. As you can see, it's this server. And I'm just wi uh, wi listening for post requests. If a post comes, I consume the body of the payload, right? Uh, and capture the particle, else I just create uh, as a get like, little uh, report, right? How capturing this particle works. If it's carbon monoxide, in any case, I just increase this thing. Otherwise, it's the other particle, right? Um, yes. So, and every second, I'm going to perform uh, a check when I go for this start operating. Uh, so, it's after one second, every second, I'm going to like, show bling and, and uh, and perform this check. So basically, I will check how many particles I have uh, of CO and, and all others, divide one by the other. And if this uh, level is reached, then I'm going to, like, you know, bells and whistles, Achtung, ah, sorry, alarm, alarm. Um, yes. And just for the sake of demo, I'm initially going to sleep for three seconds. Don't do that in production code. Even in production code, if you have to, have to go for thread sleep, I would suggest something went wrong, usually terribly. Okay, so don't do that. It's demo only. Uh, so this is how, we, how it works, uh, right? And we just click start operating, and then we log start it, right? And I, I told you there's one dependency, and dependency is, um, is uh, test containers. And oopsies, it's not even in the latest version. In the latest is 1.19.3, but 1.19 will do, okay? Uh, yes, yeah, so this is my uh, dependency. And then I'm going to use the most important shortcut in IntelliJ, if I remember how, to, how it works on Mac, um, it was Command-Shift-T. Yes! It's, it's Command-Shift-T. I mean, it's because it, it shows you these this hieroglyphs or these pic pictograms. I mean, why can't they have like Control and Shift like for people? Okay. What it does, it takes you to the test or creates a new test for you, right? So remember, like, Control shift t or Command-Shift-T, uh, right? So I have this detector test, and I'm going to use test containers. Um, so how I'm going to test it is basically going to be uh, this. It's not, like, 
quite or entirely or by the book integration test, but I don't care. What I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble the jar file, put it into a container running Java, and then I'm basically going to run integration tests, right? Just like I did with this thing. I put it into a container, right? And then I tested it. Uh, that's why we're going to run it like this. Uh, so initially, we just build the package, and then we, after the package is built, we, we put the package on the test. As you can see, build successful, it's green, time for, to play Counter-Strike, right? But then we see, actually, that three of them were skipped, so it's not quite green. Um, and it, it's, because, it's because someone disabled the pesky tests, right? Because they're always pesky when they read. So let's try to uh, rerun it, and uh, this time it should be red. Exactly, because the test failed. So what do we do? Um, first, I have this mountable file. So after Maven generates you the artifact, it's, it's located here. So then I'm using generate container. Generate container is a cornerstone in test containers. Basically, if your thing runs in Docker, you can use generate container with a bunch of configuration to tell the Docker engine how to run it. Right. It's, it's, it's working like this. So I'm saying I want OpenGDK 21 Slim, which is deprecated by now, but still working, I guess. And then I'm copying this jar to this file, TMP detector. I'm exposing port from the inside. This valve from the inside is 7890. And uh, I'm telling the detector, hey, you should uh, bind yourself to this port, right? I'm setting this uh, ENV variable. And then I'm basically going Java jar and run the thing. And that's it. That's all I need to run it inside, like my jar inside this container, right? And so I create this container, and then what I do, I go for uh, try with resources. It's really ancient technology, Java 7, if I'm not mistaken, um, right? So I'm creating this uh, container here, and then it's going to be cleaned or removed here when I end, right in here. So I start this container, and then I check the logs from this container. I split it into lines. I filter those that start with start. So I should get here start and start it. Sorry, starting and started, right? And then I, uh, that's why I needed this log FMT format, sort of, to basically split to get the events. And then I check if the log contains starting and started. It should have at least one checking, this blink, because it should blink every second, right? And uh, then I say, I need to check if it starts within four seconds. So this is the beginning of the window, right? Uh, like, uh, it, this is the starting when I know it's like got some power, and I expect within those four seconds to see start it, right? This is how we, how we do that. And as you can see, the test failed, right? It said, what did it say? It was, it was expecting this thing, so these are the logs, to contain start it, and it didn't contain this. So you might be asking, what the heck, right? Now, who has friends in Spain or Spanish-speaking countries? Very nice. I have one friend from there as well. His name is Manuel. You should be friends with Manuel, right? And what, when Manuel tells you to do something, you do that, okay? You don't cut corners. So, one of the things that Manuel says when it tends to test to test containers, and that's something that's not present in Docker itself. So, basically, we need to know when this thing ends, right? So, the container, from test containers' point of view, is started. So the control can go, and this is like basically it has to know where you before uh, all has to finish, right? So for this, we use so-called waiting strategies. And in this default setup, when you say that this port is exposed, the library assumes that when this port is bound from the inside, the thing is already started, right? This is the assumption. The manual says so. But it's not correct assumption for us because, as you can see here, uh, it's only... I mean, the, the port is bound here, and so in, in, when this method call, uh, uh, is ended, the library assumes the thing is started, right? And only after that, it, it writes started, right? So see, this is the race condition. So we have to tell it that actually, you want to consider this thing to be started when it logs that it started. So we go and we say, uh, for example, in here, wait for, uh, wait, and now we have a number of strategies. You can go for a health check, for listening pause, for successful command, but we're going for log message. And we're going to say uh, started equals uh, something, uh, right, and we expect it to appear just once. All right? 
And now let me uh, run this test again. And let's see if it, if it works, if it doesn't work. OK, yes, the test is green. See? So it wasn't the software under, under the test. It was a typical picnic situation. Problem in chair, not in computer. Okay? Uh, but we fixed that now we know how to use the DERN library. So we, what do we do? Uh, we should have another requirement. Uh, check for registered particles every second. Okay? So uh, we uh, enable or undisable, shall I say, another test. And what this test is about to do is going to, again, create the container and start the container. And then I'm going to check how many checking, checking blinks did I have, like initially because it emits these checking events already when starting, right? So I need to capture how many I have. Then I'm waiting for some time between three and four seconds using a utility. And then I expect three checking, checking, checking more. OK? So I basically uh, take uh, what I had before. I subtract what I have now. And the difference should be at least three, OK? Uh, so then we assume it's checking or at least blinking every second uh, with the thing. So um, let me rerun the test. And uh, does anyone know any dad jokes? What, what, are, what are good dad jokes in, in, in Geneva? Okay, no dad jokes. All right. So as you can see, the test is red. Right. So let's see what did it say. It says something like this. Let me make this a little bit bigger, maybe. Um, it says it was expecting this condition to be, of course, satisfied. It's not because this input doesn't contain three times more checking than initially. So apparently, it's not checking. Any ideas would might have gone wrong. Sorry? Threat sleep. Thre thre sleep. Um, it's about threats, not sleeping, but threats. Yes. Yes, let me go for. Uh, uh huh. That's a, that was a good hint. You uh, get a sticker. Yes. OK. Uh, we don't have that much time, so let me. Uh, cut some, some corners uh, here. Let me just uh, show you uh, like a hint. So this we have this thread, right, or this executor. And at fixed rate, we are, we are performing this check now. <sighs> These are the elementals, like a first grade uh, elementary school, I guess. So picture this. The whole thing starts, OK? How many carbon monoxide particles were detected? or are detected when it's starting? Zero, again. S uh, 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 correct. So then how many other particles are there? Zero. What happens when we do this? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so basically, the whole thread or executor goes Right? That's pretty international, I guess. Um, Yes, so what we have to do here is just to make sure that all is different than zero. Because when it's zero, just like skip it, don't bother, okay? So we go all, come on, it froze! My Mac froze, come on. Maybe it's just indexing, I don't know. No, really, come on, what's, what's going on? What's, I, I didn't anticipate that. No, it's not. It's not, it's, it's not planned. It's not expected. It's basically ruining everything because the clock is ticking. What shall I do? Uh, reboot. OK, yeah, reboot. Like, let me try. Sorry, we might lose, uh, lose the vision for a moment. Uh, sorry. Sometimes it helps. Huh? Now, you won't believe it. Like, look at this. What the heck? What the, what's going on? I have no idea. Let, let me quit IntelliJ. It doesn't want to quit. What on earth? How do I, how do I even kill here? Uh, sorry? 
command. Uh, there's no R, there's option. Okay, thank you. Force quit. Force quit. It didn't work. Okay. Now it seems to be it seems to be gone. Like who who said that? Okay, come for jellies, okay? You've helped me. We we killed that. I mean our JetBrains people uh I mean friends are not going to like me but because I demoed it crashing, but it's like what can I do? Sorry. Um uh, so how do I start it? I start it here and then I go for IntelJ Ultimate. Yes. Come on. Yes. Now it's the uh, it's just now it's blinking and you don't see what's going on. Oh my gosh. Oh we messed up. I messed up, sorry. Uh how how do I how do Okay, we have it. We have it. Nice. Don't don't move it now. Okay, cool. Sorry, that that wasn't planned. That really wasn't planned. Uh, now I'm all all, all sweat. Okay, but like a super stress. Never happened to me before. I'm so embarrassed. Okay, now we have to go and say that all equals b. Sorry, big decimal zero and not. This is how you program in German, right? It should equal not or nicht. Okay. Um, right. Anyway, let me rerun this test then and see if the second condition got satisfied. Uh, so I was told this dad joke back in the Netherlands. Okay. There were two dudes from Netherlands and they didn't die on the desert. Why? You should know it. They had sandwiches. Uh, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> it's that bad. It's not my, it's that bad joke, Dutch bad joke, okay? Blame them. Okay, N not my fault. Anyway, we have satisfied two requirements, and even our CI pipeline died in between, right? Uh, so let's uh, time for the, for the last one. It should raise an alarm when the level of CO particles reaches like certain threshold. So, we go for the, for the last test. Uh, which is uh, which is here, which is directly here, right? And what do we do now is again we start the container, and now we're going to create a HTTP client, right? And the client basically is going to send like uh, quite a few requests, uh, simulating that this is like a particle that got like sort of like sent. Uh, into this detector, right? And we create the the URI, the address it should connect to. And here is one of the caveats. For most of the cases, it would work if you could put localhost here. In German, it's localhost, okay? But it's localhost. Uh, but you shouldn't be putting this. Why? Because sometimes, when you have like sophisticated CI uh, set up, actually Docker is sitting somewhere else, and it's not localhost anymore. That's why you go for container get host. And then you go, because we mapped only one port, we go for get first mapped port. If we had more ports, Right? I would just say, because every time I run it, the port outside is different. It's random. That makes sure, like for example, you can have concurrent builds in CI and stuff, right? And, and you don't have these 80, 80 issues in production when you finally deploy it in Kubernetes or whatever. So I'm going to send uh, oxygen requests and uh, carbon monoxide requests, so a thousand oxygen requests and just one single uh, carbon monoxide request here, right? And then we're gonna wait until the whole thing, I mean the whole uh, sending terminates, and then within one second I expect the logs to show us Achtung, Achtung, okay? Uh, this is what we do, let me, let me run it. Uh, you're from Switzerland, right? So you might not have, have seen the ocean, okay? But what one ocean says to the other ocean when they meet. Nothing. They just wave. <laughs> yes. Sometimes it's better to be landlocked uh, country. Okay. Um, it doesn't work. It didn't work. And now, what should we do if we are proper engineers? <laughs> <laughs> Boom, right? 
Uh, no, we're not going to try it again. I, I might run off that joke. That, that jokes. What do we do? We add this statement, debug. Then we git push, and then after we see that it still fails. So we go debug one, and debug two, and debug EC, and debug final, and it still doesn't work. Fast forward one week, we have you know, many debug statements, we still don't know what's the, what's the case, right? So, the beauty of this thing is we can actually run it in our machine, like just like as, uh, as I have shown you. So what I'm going to do here, let's where, where's this failing test here? Um, in here, let me put a breakpoint, right? And let's rerun this, uh, rerun this test, uh, right? Like this, and it should be like this uh, American gangster movies, right? Everybody freeze. The thing will freeze, of course the container won't freeze, it will keep working, and we'll see, we'll have a chance to examine what's actually going on here. So, apparently it didn't raise the alarm. Why? Not enough CO2, okay. Um, we can check this, see? Uh, so it's listening, it's bound to port 51377 in here, right? So we can go for... Uh, how do I do that? This, sorry, I should have it like in here. Right, okay. Uh, curl, HTTP, local host. Um, what was the port? Uh, 51377. 51377, that's why I have this get handler, very, very com uh, like comfy for debugging. Apparently we have one CO particle detected and 1,000 other particles detected. So it's not that. And as you can see, I called the actual stuff working in the container, right? Any other ideas? Uh, can we see what? The threshold. So the threshold is here. Yeah, the, very nice. I like you, sir. Uh, the check of the threshold is here. If the guided tour to this wonderful underground facility in here taught me something that would be two things. It's the scale and the precision. Okay, you said that this check so you get jealous. And the sticker, come and get it, okay, later. Uh, so it's this, exactly. So if I have two big decimal, integerish big decimal, and another integerish big decimal, right? And we have three Java champions or alumni sitting here. What happens then? No bonus this year, I'm sorry. Uh, it means that the result also will be integerish, right? So we have to tell it, you have to be that precise as people at CERN are, right? Basically. So we have to go and say uh, alarm level dot scale. Right? That's it. I hope so. So let's run the darn thing again. Again, okay. Why do we call medievals, medieval times, dark ages? They had a lot of nights. <laughs> yes, okay. Great success. Yes, it worked. Now, a few things. There's going to be a session after me. Ivan is going to tell you how to and show you and demonstrate you actually how to use test containers with Spring Boot, right? It, it, test containers also integrates with other uh, frameworks uh, very, very nicely. It's just, uh, and I have other talks like how to like uh, squeeze the performance, how to use it efficiently, how not to shoot yourself in your feet, right? Or, or not to increase the temperature of supermagnet from 4 Kelvin to 8 Kelvin because it explodes. Um, so, in this very case, I'm starting the container for every test. Normally, you should be doing this, right? You should be doing this. And what I'm also doing, you should st just start your container and just keep it running, right? Re reset its state or something like this. The other thing is, you use generic container when the thing you want to run uh, basically is like very, very specific. But I mean specific, okay? Uh, because what's very nice thing about test containers, um, 
maybe it's like the crown jewel, I don't know, is the thing you have so-called modules. Uh, so you have the modules here, the C4, like many technologies. And I work for Elastic, right? So do you know, just by heart, from your memory, how to uh, start Elasticsearch in Docker container? I do, but it's like it's my job to know, okay? But it's it's okay that you don't know because then what we have is you go for this module, right? See, it's it's there for 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 uh, for Java, for Go, .NET, and Node.js. It can be like also for other technologies, and this it tells you how how to run it, okay? Basically, and then you can go and see, for example, you can click here for Java, and it will tell you that uh, this is like, for example, how you get the uh, the REST client to connect to this uh, thing, uh, right, and so on, and how to run it in like secure way with with password, for example, uh, and uh, this is like what you need for for Gradle, and uh, this is what you need for Maven, right? So if you're about to use the technology, chances are there's already a module for it. Okay, so don't use generate container. And if you have issues like uh, you don't know how something is, is, is working, uh, right, then you can go and join the community, Slack, GitHub, Stack Overflow, right, people are there to help you. And you might say, it's very nice, it's okay, right, and we deliver the thing, but then your manager says, nonsense, the thing is too slow, we have to go for something native, right? So what do we do? Sorry? Some people will shout, uh, rewrite it to Rust, right? And what do we do? We throw them out of the window, right? We are Java people, come on. So, uh, but then you can say, I've been to this presentation and I know what to do, right? And I'm not going to type it now because uh, like, we don't have that much time. I'm just going to copy this thing, right? Um, but I'm going to explain to you how it works. Uh, so we're going to do this thing, right? So I happen to have here, Okay, it's not working. Why is okay? Because it's like closing uh, like this. Okay, I happen to have here the native image prepared, so I'm not going to run Graal uh, to get it because I don't have this two minutes. Okay, right now, and basically now I'm not using uh, OpenGDK uh, image. I'm going. I'm using uh, Alpine image, and then I'm in not. I'm, I'm going not to copy this jar file by this uh, native thing inside my container. Right? and run it using Alpine, and then you can see uh, everything stays the same. So it started, so it's uh, this port, and I'm just call, uh, calling this thing. So uh, let, me, let me run this test again, and hopefully it will work. Uh, we shall see if it works or not. I mean, you see, now it's a different thing. Now it's running Alpine, it says. Uh, right, so the first test passed, second test passed, and the third thing passed. See? And now, we have to remember we haven't been behaving like a civilized people. We go there, we rescue this person, right? We excuse them, right? And say, okay, we, we, we've mistreated you, that was bad. We can now, of course, rewrite it to Rust. Why? Because we have a whole test suit that can actually test it. And this is the beauty of it. If you want to have proper, proper integration tests, you have to keep them in the same technology. But I know setups, for example, when people are creating artifacts, and, and like in Java, and the tests are written in JavaScript, because the testers know JavaScript, right? So it's doable from, as you can see, it can get, uh, it can get uh, detached. And uh, like I encourage you to go to Ivan's session to learn more uh, about this stuff. Uh, now it's time to conclude this. Uh, how do I switch? Okay, I, because it's this. Um, yes, all right. Um, okay. Now, lovely people, remember that it's always about feedback, right? You should tell the organizers, the speakers, how it was, did you like it, you didn't like it, and why. And you do that in your own interest, it's your own business, because that will make you get the better content next time, right? Or at another conference. So, Please, always, everyone, at every conference, every meetup, every talk, provide your feedback. The default way is to get your badge. There's my badge somewhere. And you should have like a QR code and, and just go and, 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 uh, and rate the talk. If you prefer just to go and tell me or give me a piece of paper, I can accept feedback in any form. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, then I ask you to fill this survey on, on YouTube. It's an anonymous survey and, of course, uh, hit the subscribe button. Um, 
If you fancy to follow me on social media, these are the links. If you fancy to get some uh, test container stickers to probably put on your laptops or elsewhere, you can also get them. Uh, these are, this is the link for the slides and the code. Everything is like available if you get this, uh, this link. So, in three, two, one. Okay, everyone, thank you very much. Merci, danke, grazie. Thank you.